Sure, and thank you. I, I did think about this because I have I have several, <laughs> um, as most of us who have the privilege of living long enough do. Um, I think one of my big ones that might be helpful to people, given that we're in a pandemic and so many shifts are happening, is um, in the mid '90s I took a huge leap of faith. It was incredibly terrifying for me. I um, had just graduated from law school at Georgetown. And I came to California to work at a law firm because I had massive student loan debt. So it was the best paying job I could get was going to work for a law firm. And I figured I'd get good experience. And I, I did get some great experience that helps me to this day. I, I did litigation, uh, plaintiff and defense, and I did general business and employment law. And it was fantastic. But after th about three years, I was miserable. Oh. I, I was miserable. And I felt like a complete failure. I had this phenomenal law degree with honors and I was miserable and I felt like I should be happy. And so I felt like there was something wrong with me. Literally, I was very lost. I, I, I couldn't figure it out. I, could, I was like, what am I supposed to be doing? Like I, I was an, always an A plus student. I had never taken a break, very hard, hard driving, you know, and then suddenly I came up on this abyss of meaning and of purpose. Um, so luckily I had a very supportive partner and uh, now my husband for over 25 years and um i quit my i quit with no plan and if you know me that is nuts i'm a, the most planful person you know mm -hmm. and um i quit to figure it out and it was a bad economy um and it was also i learned very humbling because i hadn't realized how much my ego had been caught up in the trappings of being an attorney mm -hmm. and i could no longer say i was i mean i was an attorney but you know i wasn't you know, doing things. So I did a whole bunch of random interesting things. Um, I helped start a nonprofit for San Francisco Opera. I'm a, I'm a passionate uh, arts fan. I traveled in Asia. I got married, um, traveled and did a bunch of odd jobs and did some career coaching. And it led me to, to realize that what I loved was helping people prevent problems before they happened. And a lot of the litigation experience had been with companies who hadn't treated employees well to begin with, or had mm -hmm. messed up when they were doing a layoff, or who just hadn't treated someone with respect um, and hadn't told them the reason why they had terminated them, perhaps. And it might've been for good, good reasons, but they mm -hmm. hadn't had the courage to be candid with them and to, to respect them and tell them. So I wound up going into HR and loved it. It's a big pay cut at the time. Um, and I had to pay my dues. I went from you know being a litigation attorney at a top law firm to um, filling out benefit forms for people who, when we used to, when things weren't online, people who, who were couldn't, who were too lazy or couldn't figure it out. You know, it was it was interesting. But I cut my teeth on that, and then from there, I was able to to hockey stick back up in my career. And um, I'm really grateful that I did that because I I learned early on that that my purpose is to be a creator and a thinker and a strategist and to help people lead and inspire change. And, and now that's what I do. I did that as an executive and now I do it as a coach. And I, I love helping to see around corners and helping people plan for healthy workplace cultures because there's so much that's that's avoidable. Um, so many mistakes you can you can avoid if you just are, are thoughtful and, and planful about things. So so that's my lost, lost and found story. <laughs> it must have been terrifying to leave a well-paid job to complete uncertainty. Yeah, the one thing I'm grateful about is that I did it at, a, at I did it at the right time, and I couldn't have known that. You don't know these things, um, but you know, I I didn't have kids yet. Um, I didn't have a mortgage. Um, it was a perfect time to take a risk. And the other thing that it taught me, which has stayed with me, is that it's okay to do that. That I have. Mm -hmm. I'm resourceful and that I'm resilient and we, we are all res more resilient than we ever know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can't see the future. You don't know. Um, but I wound up doing it a couple more times. And I credit that first time with allowing me to give myself permission to get off the hamster wheel and to take a break and that, and that I was going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And so that enabled me subsequently a couple of other times in my life to take planned, mm -hmm. a little more planful sabbaticals where I, I, you know, designed my departure. Mm -hmm. I, I now could see it's enabled me to see the, um, the growth and change cycles in a, in a career and the momentum that you have 
and when when you have it when it's peaking and when it's gone and when it's time to leave and that it's not the, that it's not a failure it's just the life cycle of certain roles and certain jobs and that's been incredibly powerful for my clients as well as we assess their teams and where they need to be challenging people or, or having conversations really valuable and so i would tell anyone to to just you know have that have that courage and understand that you have that that resilience true very very true we have a lot of untapped resilience inside us that, yeah. that we are not aware of 